Joining us now to discuss are Dr. Greg Marchand, who is an OBGYN, a cancer survivor, singer, songwriter, and breast cancer survivor, Kelly Lang, and Lydia is back with us. Uh, doctor, give us a feel for why this kind of change was necessary and what the effect will be. Well, the United States Preventative Services Task Force really thought it was necessary to make this change because when they looked at the data, they were estimating about a 19 percent decrease in breast cancer deaths uh, that could be obtained if we just dropped the screening age from 50 to 40. Uh, and that's going to be a really big number. And of course, uh, when the United States Preventative Services Task Force makes a recommendation, you know, unlike other expert groups, uh, this recommendation uh, becomes mandatory in the U.S., meaning that healthcare providers in the United States or, or healthcare insurance providers in the United States are going to have to cover these recommended services free of charge. Uh, so this is really coming into line with a lot of other expert opinions that were put out by uh, expert committees, including the American College of Radiology, the American College of Breast Surgeons, and the American. College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, which I'm a member of. And uh, Kelly, the task force um, that the doctor mentioned did take into account, of course, the latest statistics on breast cancer when making its recommendation. Uh, the American Cancer Society noting that one in only eight women will develop breast cancer in the course of their lives, and breast cancer makes up nearly 30 percent of new cancers in U.S. women each year. They also say that in 2023, approximately 297,000 new cases will be diagnosed and 43,000 women will die. Now, some say the new recommendations, however, do not go far enough. What do you say? Well, I have a different view on all of this. I am so thrilled that they're lowering the age because uh, it, modern technology, modern medical advances have been so amazing. I am an 18-year breast cancer survivor. And when I went through this, even the mammogram did not pick up my particular cancer. And uh, so I was a little skeptical of, of any type of treatments or any type of testing at the time I went through that. Uh, but as I've grown, grown through the years, I realize how much incredible advances that we've made in medicine and the 3D ultrasounds, the 3D mammograms have really come into play and in giving me comfort as a patient. And I am thrilled that they're lowering this. I have two young daughters that I know, you know that they are at higher risk with me being a breast cancer survivor and to know that they they can get this type of treatment earlier in their life or this type of testing earlier in their life is really uh, comforting to me as a mother. Yeah, doctor, it seems like a good idea. What was the resistance? Was it because insurance companies didn't want to do that? Because it seems like Kelly was saying better technology now, and it seems like a, a positive step for all women. Well, I don't think so. As part of the bylaws of the Preventative Services Task Force, they say that they really don't take into account uh, what the cost is of the recommendations, just how many lives they save. Uh, so I think the main factor here is going to be that if you're testing too often, uh, you've got a higher chance of false positives. Uh, for example, if you move the number of mammograms to every year as opposed to every two years, uh, you're going to have a 40 percent greater risk of, uh, of false positives. You know, that's going to be women who are going to have to go get biopsies of their breasts done that are going to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, and those biopsies are not going to find breast cancer. Right. Uh, combine that with the fact of the discomfort of having mammograms and the fact that uh, exposing women to having to do these tests more often might actually make them show up less often for care. Uh, I think those were probably the biggest factors in the decision. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly. If I might interject, I found my cancer uh, with a self-exam. I think that's even a, an incredible first step. And I think it's important that women are taking taking control that their, uh, their gut instinct can tell them whether they should go and get tested or not. On some occasions, it really saved my life. And I really advocate for people to do self-care. Well, what the doctor was talking about regarding uh, false positives, that's actually what happened to me. I have a close family member who has breast cancer, so I was told to get the early screening. I had to go for the ultrasound, the very uncomfortable biopsies. And to this day, I'm paying it off. I mean, that's the other thing. I hope the insurance companies catch up to what the recommendations are, because while the mammogram was 100% covered, the 3D ultrasound, especially if you have a particular type of breast where it's more uh, dense, right. a breast mass, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that kind of uh, tissue if you have that sort of type of breast also for the biopsy so it can be very expensive and I just hope that the insurance companies continue yeah. to pay for all of it but yes I, I've heard of I have a friend of mine Janice Smith who was only in her mid-30s when she passed away from breast cancer so I think that also we have to look into why are we seeing so many young women dying of breast cancer and it tends to be more aggressive the younger the woman is yeah and also we always hear I think as women the key to survival is that early detection and you know Lydia I've had 
similar experiences to you as well. And paying for those extra tests are very, very costly. So again, mm -hmm. we do hope the insurance catches up. And Dr. Greg Marchand, it seems that you are saying that we're on the right track here. So uh, Dr. Marchand and Kelly Lang, thanks so much for joining us. And Lydia, please stick around.